Come on, you know what I want. Yo, shout out to the Most High. It's always a high see when we in our Lord's states. You know what I'm saying? I'm LD. He's also known Lawrence the motherfucking one for another episode of I Need to Know with my special guest. Ooh, be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Four racks, one half of the mechanic. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, this motherfucker crazy. What's up, man? What's up, baby? It's man, love. thank you for coming out, man. Man, it's love, man. Thank you for having us. Tweed couldn't be here. Unfortunately, it was my fault too. We had, we got so much going on, but I, I, I'm gonna take this one on the chin. So for the fans and for the supporters, we're gonna pull up again as the mechanics. But for today, I'm gonna hold us down just because uh, I was in the area. And I could do it, so it's good. Okay, for sure, man. Shout out to Kenny Tweed. Shout out my brother like Tweed. Yes. So yeah, man. For those that don't know, for rats, you know what I'm saying. He make beats. How long you been doing that? Uh, I've been cooking up for. Long time, man. Well, I'm, I think I'm like 26 years old now, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I just turned 26 or 25, so um, I don't know, man, as long as I can, can remember. Now, seriously, probably about, um, I started cooking around 15, 16. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, something like that. One time we was building, chopping it up and shit like that. Are you originally, you said you was originally from Chicago? Yeah, from suburbs of Chicago. My Like my father, my father's side of the family, they from, uh, from all the suburbs, and then my mother's side of the family, they from in the city. Okay. So I'm all, I was all through Illinois till my early, like, early teens, you know what I'm saying? So were you into hip-hop making music back then? Nah, hell no. I was dancing and just loving loving music, pure loving life. Just a kid, regular kid, you know what I'm saying? Okay. It, it wasn't until I heard uh, Grandmaster Flash, the message, that I was like, what's this? And that was my, like, introduction to hip-hop. And that yeah. was, after that, it was a rap. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, a lot of producers rap, too. Do you rap? I, I can. Okay. Yeah, I can. I mean, you know, I love this. I love the art. I'm real good at it, too. But it, it just, it didn't, like, a lot of people didn't gave it such a bad name because niggas ain't really got nothing to say. They just in it to just be in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where, where I give a fuck about the art form. So it's a little bit different to me. But, um... But yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess to answer your question, I could rap, nigga. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I could rap. I've been hearing you on hooks, though. Oh yeah, hooks go crazy. <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing. Hooks hear, go crazy. I've been. He- How much do a hook cost? Or do it depend on who it is? Or do you have to like the song? Yeah, it depend on who it is. I ain't. I ain't gonna even. I ain't even gonna lie to you. It's, you know, some people get it for the F. Yeah. Other niggas gotta pay the high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, baby. <laughs> you, know I, you know I like shit like that. You Somebody know? gotta pay for it, man. <laughs> Somebody do. So how did you get hooked up with Kenny Tweed? Um, there was an artist that uh, I was producing for, and Tweed was producing for, and the artist brought us together. His name was IRS. Okay. Shout out, shout out IRS, yeah. It was through him that uh, we came together and uh, was like, got on each other's radar. Like, he knew who I was. I had records out at the time, but um, I didn't know who he was. And then uh, IRS brought him to the studio, and I was like, this nigga ill. You feel yeah. me? So, so it was like, okay, cool. Now, I, mean? I seen y'all work and shit like that. Y'all make beats together. Like, what was the process where y'all first was making, was y'all originally just like a beat squad where you made beats and you made, I mean, he made beats? When did y'all start making them together? Uh, well, I was producing the hitters on the payroll. Okay, shut and up. I had did a, I did their whole solo album, um, Underground Like Dead People. And, and then they spent off and did another record with a different record company, their own company. And at that time, they was dealing with Tweed. Mm-hmm. So, um, as I'm kind of like Big Bruh. So they came to me was like, Big Bruh, come listen to what we've been doing over here on High Street. Yeah. You feel me? So I'm like, all right, it's good. Fuck it, I'll come. So when I came over there, it was Tweed House. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, this the brother I met through IRS. So um, instantly, I'm just listening. I was just a fly on the wall. And then he was like, nigga, you want to jump on? Get on something. So we started cooking and... That was the end of it. The rest is history. The rest shit is like, history, yeah. You know, y'all's making a lot of good music, you know what I'm saying? I remember Jay Stalin got part of his, like, first push in there. For sure, for sure. We put him out. We signed Stalin. Stalin we signed Stalin to the mechanics as a, uh, with a, as a production deal. 
Yeah. And then put out his very first album. So we we was very, very instrumental in, in uh giving Stalin his first legs. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, that yeah. shit was dope. Cause you yeah, know, yeah, we won on that. Like a lot of people be like, Y'all got any artists? Like we only had one artist in our whole career. Our our, our artist was Stalin. Yeah. So after you hit a home run like that, it's hard to fill them shoes. We looking for artists. Yeah. Just ain't found another Stalin. So how they gonna get at you? I mean they get at us every day. It's just you just gotta have it in you. You gotta like Stalin ain't so some people got it, man. Yeah. Other people don't. Some people got it and some people just don't. You have you ever I mean? listened to some shit and you was like, ha have you ever had to tell a motherfucker that they shit wasn't flying? Yeah. Is that hard for you to do as a producer? No. Nope. No. Nope. I'm not a yes nigga. I'm going to tell you what I think. Okay. And just because what I think don't make it the truth. It's okay. just my opinion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That could be just, you know. Talk about I remember shit. I was taking Filthy Rich off records. Filthy will tell you. Y'all do an interview with Filthy Ass and say, that nigga Dot said he took you off a song. He gonna say, yeah, that nigga took me off a song, but it made him go harder. Yeah. Ask him. Talk about a time where you actually He hurt. was hot at me, too. But nigga took me off the song, nigga. Yeah. And he was in jail, found out the record that he was on. <laughs> I took him off. Right? So he so he came home to, like, uh... I didn't, know, I didn't even know he was in jail. We uh, talked about it years later, but... Yeah. It's an it's a, it's a ongoing thing, like, he, you know, that I took him off some, um, some music and shit, and he was just like, you know... But I, when we talked about it, I was like, that ain't shit ain't do nothing but make you go harder. Yeah. I been, nigga, I been took off a million, I've been taking, taking off a million songs. Yeah. As far as it hooks is what or it as far is. as like beats? Hooks, verses, whatever. Beats didn't make it. Submitted beats, they didn't use them. Yeah. It's just part of the game. Have you ever been sitting on a beat for hella long, didn't use it, and then it turned around and been a hit? Uh, no, not that I could think of. If it's dope, we're trying to push it out the door. You know what okay. I'm saying? Normally it catch somebody fuck with it. Yeah, nah, I don't think nothing really been just sitting around. Not like that. Okay, and what was the yeah. first song you did with Too Short? First song was Short? Oh, I don't know. This had to be years and years ago. But it was probably not, it was, I don't know. Damn, what was the first song we did with Short? Um... It wasn't fuck that. It was, I don't know. I don't remember. It's been so many years. It should be a blur, boy. I don't know. But fuck that was our early one. Yeah. It was a styling, a styling and too short. Yeah, that was an early one. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Shout out, shout out Big Dog, too short. He just had a birthday, too. For sure. Didn't he make like 53 in this month? Something like that. Something like that. 27, 28. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> young he, still. he been in this motherfucker for a minute, man. That nigga been in, yes, he has. Yes, he has. Shout out, dog, big dog. I said if this rap shit was a Bible, he'd be like Noah. He was around <laughs> before the flood and after that the flood. Part. <laughs> that part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so are there any East Coast artists that you aspire to work with that you ain't touched out yet? Hell of them. Because all we've been really focused on was home. We just wanted to make sure that home was lit yeah. before we even got on the road, so... Um, but we just did we just we just did one on Dave East album. Oh really? Yeah, it's uh it's called Devil Eyes. So yeah, we did one for Dave East that was dope. They they fucked around, put Mozzie and uh E forty on it. So that was a blessing. Oh, I you know, know that man? shit is going fucking crazy. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Good money too. Good money. Yeah, yeah. I like <laughs> I like how I like, <laughs> gotta say that. You gotta say that. I like how you talking that money talk, man. Man, you got to man. And, and, and Ken be right there with you. Man, these little young niggas <laughs> is getting to a bag of money that you niggas ain't seen before. Trust that. So yeah, fuck that. Let's get paid. So Excuse you been, my language. So you been in the game for a minute. Do you look at it like it's harder to get on now? Or is hell it no, nah, it's, it's hella easier. It's hella easier as long as you're creative. Like I said, a lot of people do this shit just because they're just trying to do it. But if you're born for it, if your mind works a certain kind of way, you're going to find your lane, and it's going to happen for you. It's, it's one fight. way or another, yeah. And if you're patient, you're going to get your, your turn. It's have you, easy. Have you ever had any shit on the radio? Hell of shit, yeah. Styling records. Mostly styling records. Yeah. Um, I had a couple records that Vine was fucking with that was just on, on some, some Forex records. Um... Records in, on the East Coast, Chris Webber records, shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, we had records. 
Have there ever been a time that you actually want to stop and be like, you know what, I don't know if I want to do this shit. I just want to retire or just put my keys up real quick. Early on, yeah, early on, it was times definitely where the money wasn't coming in and shit. Niggas was like, yeah, we love this shit, but it ain't paying the bills. You know what I'm saying? So early on, yeah, there was moments where a nigga wanted to stop, but once you go so far, it's like you can't go back. So what, what you going to do? Nigga, push harder. Keep going. Yeah, so nigga, ever since then, nigga ain't, uh, nigga ain't thought like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that money started coming in, he, it started making sense. What was the first song that you actually made was like, damn, I think I, I don't think I can make nothing tighter than this. The first song be like, man, I am so fucking proud of this one. Uh, probably the first one I saw, first beat I saw, because um, it was the first time a motherfucker cashed me out. You feel me? I was like, ooh. I, and that's when I when I really fell in love with this shit. Like, I knew that this is why I wanted to do it, because now I got to beat myself. Yeah. Every time I make a beat today, if it's dope, tomorrow I got to outbeat that. Okay. So, so, yeah, the first beat I saw, I was like, this shit is hard, and now I got to beat this motherfucker. How am I going to do it? You know what I'm saying? And just di dive in and just do what you do. A lot of times, like, when you got, like, two people, whether they rapping or making music This together, nigga like, good at his job, huh? This nigga go, like, he ain't got no pay, but you know me too, though. Yeah, that's right. That's what I told him. This nigga, <laughs> this, got, this nigga got questions. I'm like, damn, this nigga ain't even breathing. He got good questions. That's good shit, bro. Come on. Yeah, let's let's go. I'm with it. So, you know, I'm going to get into the fun in a minute. No, nah, that's to dope. I'm having a ball, nigga. Come on. So, check this out. You know how, like, there's two people, right? right. You know what I'm saying? Where one rapper, like let's just say like Daz and Corrupt, right. you know what I'm saying? One, Corrupt is the more lyrical, and then um, Daz is more better on the music, Production. and that's like that right. with Mob Deep as well. Mm -hmm. Y'all both make beats. Right. What do you see in like Kenny Tweed be like, damn, man, I'm glad he's on my team because he does that just a little bit better. I mean, I would say Tweed is more musical, and I would be more, uh, and not to take, yeah, I guess... If we looked at it like those other scenarios, yeah, I would say Tweet is more musical and I do a little bit more on the other end. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever uh, caught Tweet trying to rap? Nah, I knew he did before. I never got a <laughs> chance to hear the tapes and shit. But he told me he did, you okay. know what I'm saying? But, I mean, shit, I, I can't lie. Tweet be helping me with hooks and shit. I be in there writing shit and that nigga get to spitting out shit. I be like, nigga, if you don't get on the mic. Yeah. Like, no, nah, bro, you know I'm just going to stay back and bro, bro, stay in my lane, bro, bro. It's good, but yeah, Tweet so got lines, nigga. I can, ask, call that, I can call that nigga right now, like, and tell him half a half a bar, and he'd give me a bar. Just like that. So he got bars? Yeah, stop it. Okay. Now, this is the part where I want to ask you, you know what I'm saying? Do you look at Big Boy from Outcast as being underrated? Uh, underrated? Only, be, yeah, maybe, because he, he got a, there's a big shadow. Andre is a huge yeah. It's a huge. He casts a huge shadow. You know what I'm saying? So that might be the only reason. But bar for bar, Big Boy is a bad motherfucker. He is a bad motherfucker. <laughs> He's a bad motherfucker. You better stop it. And, I mean, just to even be able to uh, to go spar with Andre, yeah. you got to be a, on uh, on the like, the upper echelon. Like you got to be up there. Yeah, Andre. You know, Andre, what's so dope about Dre to me is that he could tell a story in one verse. Yeah, he go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Go crazy. When you think about rappers that tell stories, who would you say is your favorite storyteller that's a rapper? Slick Rick. Slick Rick? Yeah. Rick dope. I go Ice Cube. I always Cube thought, was dope, too. I thought, Slick Rick was, I think just because his, voc uh, his, his vocabulary... Yeah. And his uh, his uh, accent, accent, accent. Yeah, I think that's what did it. When you think of underrated rappers, who's the most underrated rapper from the East Coast? East Coast underrated rapper from the East Coast. I don't know. I couldn't even begin. You know who I got? Who? Cool. Coogee Rap. Rap get G got G, G Rap get his credit? Yeah, but anytime they put a top fifty list, he's not on it. 
Or, you know. Yeah, you got it. But you got to start looking at the people that be putting these lists together. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> that's real. Cause you know like, what I'm saying? He's like, dope. Like, she rappers is one of them boys. Yeah, like I would say like if hip hop was basketball, I'd say she rappers equivalent to like Isaiah Thomas. Oh, yeah. it's a good one. I like that. So I like that. That's good. I like that. Speaking of if rap was basketball, mm. is Kanye's impact to hip hop greater, equal to, or less than Pippin's to basketball? Than Pippin? Yeah. Scotty Pippin. Equal. At least. I mean, he... I mean, I would say more, but the next thing that's bigger is Jordan, right? Yeah. So, and the next thing that was bigger than than him from Rockefeller was Jay-Z. Yeah. So he has to be, like, Scotty, as, as good as Scotty and... But I like he did everything that nobody else could do. He he turned he went from producer to artist and passed every artist on that label. That was crazy. Every artist. Yeah. And these wasn't no punks. Beanie Seagulls and the shit, Camerons, all them niggas. You know what I'm saying? He passed all them niggas up. Them niggas was making records. He was making singles that was counting. Yeah. And yeah. producing them. All the way up though. All the way up. I be looking. I at- mean, to the point where Jay Z had to do an album with him. Yeah, uh, watch the throne. Watch the throne. And he gave and he gave Jay Z gas. That whole album gave him problems. So well, how many mics you get that shit? <laughs> well, watch the throne. Yeah, if probably four, four pouring some change. Oh, okay. would. Okay, it might be a five. It might be a five mic album. It's a, some of the beats I didn't really like. Really, really attach myself to. But bar for bar, and the verses and the concepts and. Them niggas was out there. They pushed the envelope. This shit was hard. Nigga, watch the throne. It was incredible. Okay, okay. It was. So, I want you to rank these albums which you see fit in order, all right? I'm one, finna, one to ten? Or? No, no. I'm finna name four albums, and you tell me what you like first, second, third, fourth. Okay. All right. Thug Motivation, Young Jeezy, Get Rich, Die Trying, 400 Degrees, and It's Dark as Hell It Out by DMX. DMX probably last. Okay. First, probably 400 degrees. Mm. Second, it was 50 and what else? 50 Cent and, uh, and uh, Thug Motivation by Young Jeezy. Oh, my God. That was a... That nigga talk cocaine like nobody ever snowman. on that album. That's the snowman. Snow! <laughs> that nigga had to... That's when he had to... No. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Um, damn, that's hard, bro. I don't know. It's between them two. A second. One of them is a second. Uh-huh. Yeah. You said DMX was last, though. I didn't fuck with the beats on It's Dark oh. as Dark. I, I never liked DMX beat selection. I never was a Swiss beat fan till, like, years later. Okay. I don't think Swiss beats was got dope till he start, start humping on Alicia Keys. And let me see. He was, that, all that shit sounded like pots and pans. <laughs> he made one dope beat. The one for um, okay. what these niggas want for one nigga. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Even then, it sounded like pots and pans. Ding, 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 ding. It was pots and pans. That fool said pots and pans. I've never heard no shit like that. You don't, hey, you don't agree? You know what? Now that you say something, because I'm, I'm fucking, you. you know, that damn near sound like uh, uh, two rappers that sell dope together. A rapper's name, Pots and Pans. Pots and Pans. Hey. Uh, that nigga Beast was sound like, he hot now, he hard. He hard now, but early up, I didn't, I didn't really like none of that shit. You know how they say, like, uh, the king of New York of rap and shit like that? Mm-hmm. If California had a king, who would don't you give that crown that to? Don't not ask me that shit. I don't know. You wouldn't? I, I don't I don't even know how to answer that shit. Okay, okay. Niggas getting their feelings too much, man. I, you can't have an opinion about certain things. Just let niggas believe what they believe, bro. Especially if a nigga like me got a, a fake little bit of a voice or a platform. Hell no. Okay. I say some shit like that. I'm going to have 30 niggas in my DM. Like, nigga, how you going to say? So, get out your feelings. Okay, okay. Stop it. <laughs> okay. My bad, I wasn't thinking about you this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm only human. Okay, okay. Well, my well, I'm going to say it. You know what okay, I'm saying? Okay, it's great. I would say it had to be, if I had to say it would have to be out of Ice Cube and then Snoop. Okay. I go Ice Cube and Snoop. Moving on. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah, shout out to Snoop. Shout out to Q. They're both of them was prolific artists. Like, yeah. come on, they've done so much for the culture. Okay. Speaking yeah. of Q, what are Q first three solo projects? Um, America's Most Wanted, right? Okay. Um, number two was uh, was it Death Certificate? Or was Death Certificate? Oh my God, you got me fucked up. I do, and I'm a good historian too, for the most part. Sometimes, I like sometimes I slip though. Yeah. But um, I thought America's Most Wanted, Death Certificate, and what was that third one? Am I even right with those two? You right with those two? Yeah. So I got two out of three. As soon as you tell me the third one, I'm gonna say ah, yeah. The EP in the middle, Kill at Will, with Jack and for Beats. Oh, Kill at Will. Boom. You're right. Okay. My bad. But see that? that see, let me tell you where you was wrong. That's not an album. I said Projects. Oh, did you? I did. Okay, Save Jazz. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That's see, Save Jazz. That's like when a nigga... I was going to say, that's an EP, nigga. That's not an album. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Jack and for Beats was hard. What album did you hear that you was like, damn, man? I wish I made that. Hell of them. Hell of them? Hell of them. NWA's uh, Niggas for Life. I'm glad you said that, because I feel like that album don't get enough credit. Born the Mac. Okay. It's hell of them, nigga. For generations, it's hell of them. Yeah. Outcast shit, that first album. Come on, Southern Player Cadillac. What is it? How you say it? Southern Playalistic Cadillac, Cadillac Music. Fun, Funky music. music. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> nah, that shit. And then even not even rap music. Like, Miles Davis, Bitches Brew. It's shit, nigga. It goes on and on and on. It's, a, it's so much great music out there. Well, you being this motherfucking beat maker and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Say like you had to go to space for one year. What five albums are you taking? What artists? What five artists and albums you taking? Five artists. I mean, five, five albums. albums. Five albums. Damn. And you said for a year? Yeah, for a year. Oh yeah. Since you're talking money, they're gonna give you a million dollars just to go to space. So. So when am I leaving today? Tomorrow? You leaving tomorrow? Okay, so what did I Wait, can I ask you a question? That was kind of deep. I like shit like that. What is the difference if you leave right motherfucking now or tomorrow? Because, <laughs> nah, because just just what's what's popping today ain't popping tomorrow. Okay. So, you know, it's so <laughs> much music. Okay. I could go from hey. one thing today and tomorrow is like, nah, I want to play this. Okay. So if I was to go to outer space, I pro right now I'm definitely going to take my niggas from Griselda. I don't know which album I'm probably going to take. Um, uh, what Would Machine Gun Do? I would definitely take that album. Them niggas is going crazy. If y'all if y'all ain't awake or hip to what's going on with our Griselda. Um, so I'd take that album. I'd take... Uh, wow. I'd take this new J Styling album we working on. On behalf of the Streets Part 3. That shit go crazy. Um, damn, there's so much good music. Uh, I take this new Keek the Sneak album we about to drop, Gorilla. That's three, huh? That's three. And I ain't shit because I'm taking my own music, huh? That's fake. It's no, fake. no, it ain't. I'm supposed to take other niggas' shit, huh? No, it ain't. Wait. That's hella bullshit. Like, this nigga in there, you get off your own dick, nigga. <laughs> I take Griselda. I take uh, some throwback shit. Razkaz, Blasphemy. I take that. If y'all never heard that, go see. Ooh, that's an incredible album. Um, I take. Uh, damn man, well I can't think of nothing. My mind draws a blank. I think it's because it's just so much good music out there that you put me on the spot. I probably just go through my Apple shit real quick and just. Grab three. I'm coming home in a year. Yeah. I grab Brother Lynch Loaded. Okay. Yeah, that's something I can always play. Give me your five. That's three. Okay. Maybe uh, Eminem's first album with Dre. That's four. And then maybe All Eyes on Me. Something All like I that. Yeah, that's definitely going Something like that. Yeah, it's, a, it's too many, bro. I don't know. So now, so now. I hate these fucking types of questions, bro. Because it's like, because see, and, and that's, <laughs> and, I'm, and, I, and while, I'm, while I'm here, let me, let me address that. Like, people been hitting us trying to get us to do these contests and shit, these challenges and shit, and, or 
battles, what they calling them online and shit. Man, stop this. Stop doing that shit. Like, that shit is just... When you when you when you lift up one person, you gotta put another person down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the shit just be looking tacky. And it's cool when when niggas got a lot of accolades, cause then ain't nobody tripping. But if you got a lot of niggas that's just ain't nobody really made it to where they trying to get to yet and they still climbing, they don't need no separation. They don't need no looking down on them or nothing. Everybody need to, that upliftment. You know what I'm saying? So, so I just, you know, I just want to, this is just a sidebar. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't like, I don't like challenges and shit like that because it, cause it got to be a winner and whenever there's a winner, there has to be a little Yeah, yeah. You know when I saying? ask that question, you don't just like what you like, yeah. though. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, you me. You just testing my ear. Yeah, yeah, like like me. Like if you ask me what five I'm taking, I'm taking Michael Jackson Thriller. Thriller. Oh, see, I'm, you want to start I'm, popping. Go ahead. I'm putting all eyes on me up there. Off the wall went crazy, too, though. See, yeah. But I like Thriller a little bit more, but Off the Wall was cool because it was a little bit more disco. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I agree. I definitely you know, agree, and yeah. you have to really be like a beat maker to know Off the Wall yeah. a little bit more than Thriller. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a motherfucker that catches music kind of like when it meets the surface. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I said, uh, <laughs> I like uh, All Eyes on Me. I'm taking All Eyes on Me, not because it's my favorite Pac album, but because it has more music. Machiavelli is my favorite Pac album. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, right. Yeah, but it did have... Shit, what, 20-something? I don't know how many songs is on like that motherfucker. 24, like 24-something like that? Like yeah. 12, virtually like 12 on both. Yeah, like 24 records. Uh, I'm taking Erica Badu. Ah. Baduism, because Baduism. I might want some smooth shit. You know what I'm saying? And the last one, I might take a... I like Closer uh, by Guapale. I like that a lot. Okay. Okay, you know what? I never heard that whole album. That album was dope, man. I never heard that. I need to, you know what? Thank you. I'm going to put that on my things to do list. Yeah. While we got all this quarantine going on. Yeah, you should uh, Even Closer is like the Hieroglyphics remix. They got a lot of Hieroglyphics remixes and additions and shit like that on there. Shout out Guapi. Guapi, Guapi, Guapi. Guapale, man. So I was going to ask you the same similar question, but I want to know, like, what artists you take that you like for, like, one from each coast that you want to take to make some music with? Um... Oh, so we're going to have a studio in space. You're going to have a studio in space. Oh, we out there making slap. That's dope. Yeah. Uh, let's see. From the West Coast, um, the Bay, West Coast, or L.A.? or Just, just the whole Cali. The whole We're, Cali. I mean, just the whole West. The whole West. Whoever you got in the West. Damn, man. See this? See what I'm saying? You keep hitting me with these same questions, man. It's like somebody can't go now. Okay, okay. Damn, You want bruh. me to scratch that? Nah, it's good. Let me try and answer it. I'll try. I'll just, you know, it's like, fuck. Um, from the West Coast, I would take... Uh, fuck it. I'm going to say Lil Pete. He's a little young nigga. He hot. Y'all know Lil Pete. Lil Pete yeah. from Frisco. He dope. I'll take Lil Pete because we're going to come back with some shit. Uh, from down south, mm-hmm. I'll probably grab... Damn. Oh, fuck. I grabbed Thugger. Thugger is insane. Yeah, yeah. So many <laughs> niggas, so many <laughs> niggas that stole a chicka, 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 huh? Yeah. So many niggas that stole a page out of his book. So Young Thug, Lil Pete, where else from? The East, East Coast. Coast. And from New York. Uh, yeah, one of the Griselda niggas. I'll probably take Benny the Butcher. Okay. Yeah. In Midwest. Midwest. Um... Uh, I take young chop fat ass. That nigga going crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the BC reference. That nigga on there got the internet going up. So I take young chop fat ass because then I can kick back and he can do some of the beats. You feel me? We can make some beats, nigga. So now the same question, but now you got to tell me a dead artist from uh, these places. Oh shit, man! You know, <sighs> Pac Big. Uh, Proof from Detroit, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pac Big. Um, where Pop Smoke was from? From Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn, huh? Yeah. So I can't do two Brooklyn niggas. I definitely do Big, you know. Big, Pac, Proof. Um, I don't know, bro. 
Ain't no Nipsey. Come on, man. It's, t- it's some niggas that's, yeah. that's gone that shouldn't be gone, man. Yeah, I know, man. I Shout wish out they to were still here making records. Shout out to all them. You know what I'm you saying? You know what I'm saying? So it's, I don't know, bro. What is the key that you feel as though to stay relevant? Reinvent yourself. You know what I'm saying? Every couple of, I don't know the time frame. Somebody said like every five years, you, your, your consciousness does a little twisting. You know what I'm saying? I know if I look back at a photo album or, or, and see pictures of myself from a time period, I'd be like, what the fuck did I have on? Like, what was I, you know what I'm saying? And that just means that times or trends changed and what I thought was cool ain't cool no more. You well, know what, what I'm saying? Well, was it the time that changed or did you change? Could be a little bit of both. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of both. Okay. Maturity and shit. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. So did you I go- answer the question? Kind of. Kind of. What like, was the question again? The, uh, what did you... Um, you said something about reinventing yourself. Oh, yeah, reinventing yourself. Yeah, okay. and it's like if I looked at an old picture and a motherfucker oh, yeah, had a yeah. big-ass That's afro, how you stay... You said how to stay relevant. I said yeah, reinvent to- yourself. Yeah, reinvent yourself and... Um, that's pretty much it. Because, like, for some some people, reinventing themselves might uh, be making, like, different, like, trap beats or, or slow beats that a lot of young mm-hmm. rappers or, like, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. making themselves, like, adjusting with the time sometime, like, reinventing okay. yourself. Right. But, like, if that was the time back then, then, you know, like, if I looked at my mother's picture in the 80s and the motherfucker had no pocket sweatpants and a jerry curl, <laughs> I mean, we could look back and be like, damn, what the fuck you had on? But that was everybody's That was mama. everybody, right, right, right. It's like, boy, boy your mama was a cold freak. <laughs> Back in the day, boy, your mama was a cold freak. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. You know I like you know what I'm like talking that. About. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was- but now nah, you just got to just look in the mirror and just, you know, <laughs> things change. And you got to find out where you at and how you sit with things and constantly evolving. You know what I mean? Do you got any, like, understudies under you right now that's like, man, teach me how to make beats. I want to be the next 4 X. Nah, we got to just... It's a lot of your little young cats that already know what they like. They they on their path. They they going. So um, we just trying to encourage, but not really, not really. Um, my little young ne- um, nephew Tali, DJ Taliban, shout him out. He hot right now. He doing a lot of a lot of young niggas beats and shit. Um, I mean, my son rapping now. Okay, uh, little, how did he? little bug? He just turned eighteen. Okay, okay. Yeah, so little bug, he 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 got a little following that's that's acting up right now. Um, my nephew Parnell, he's all like in house. Um, yeah. Herb on the beat, that's like one of my little nephews. Um, uh, what's Mikey's son? I got another nephew hot than the motherfucker too, making beats. But it's a few. With all uh, with all them young legs and stuff like that, you thinking about signing them to? Shout your out life? LT LT Beats too. It's another. I could, I could say your protege, but my bad. What you say? I was gonna say with all those young people and stuff like that, including your son and stuff like that. Do you think about signing them? Um, that's what the industry is saying. That that's that's the the new shit. You gotta sign everything. Sign everybody because that's the only way you can really have some uh, attachment if the money come come through the door, but realistically, nah, we, we, we just trying to um, point them in the right directions and let them eat, let them eat. Like, we doing distribution right now for little youngsters where, where uh, you know, like an empire, we give you an outlet, you know what I'm saying? You come to us, we stamp you, boom, put that mechanics on it, boom, and, and you know, put it on our channel and, you know, just kind of give a little bit of coaching if you if you willing to listen, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So. Cause a lot of little young niggas don't want to listen. They know everything. So, cool. Those are the ones where just let them do their thing. But if you want to listen or you want some schooling or some, uh, you know, some opinions about some shit, yeah, we give you whatever whatever game I got is Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever worked with an artist that wanted you to actually work harder at their project than they wanted to work? Yeah, but I won't, I won't mention their name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, it's happened. It's happened like you look up and it's like, hold on, I'm on time. You're never on time. I'm putting money into this project. You looking for somebody to put money into the project. Like, shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. It's a part of the process. It's part of the game. You go run into all that shit. Have somebody ever slid you their demo and you was like, man... I like the lyrics, but I just can't fuck with the beats. And then you just pulled them closer to you, and then you just seem like a difference in the sound? Nah. 
Never did that. Not yet. Not to this day. Like, I'm a fan of this shit, so I, I, I know how to get out the way when it comes to just if I don't like a beat. It don't mean, you know, sometimes... Like how I was talking about DMX and Swiss Beats. I never liked Swiss Beats beats, but what DMX made out of them beats was phenomenal. Yeah. So it ain't got to always be a tight-ass beat. It's the, it's about the song. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So I know how to get out the way of it just because if I don't like the beat or something, you know? You know what's crazy, like though? That. Because, like, I like beats. You know what I'm saying? And it, when I mm -hmm. heard, and I totally felt you when, when you were talking about that Swi uh, DMX. The shit, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. DMX is uh, Hell is Hot. Oh, yeah. When I listened to that, I wasn't listening to it for the knock. I was listening to it because it sounded like what a fucking DMX movie. Is doing? Oh, it yeah. sounded like a movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I like albums that sound like movies. Dr. Dre does that phenomenal. Does he? If you put in all the way to Easy Does It, that is a motherfucking movie. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The reason got credits, that, the music, the score, the everything. Yeah. You're right, it's a motherfucking movie. Uh, yeah. The RZA does that really good. Yeah, it's very good. Shout out to RZA. For don't, sure. Don't. Speak, speaking of that, tell me your favorite uh, album to come out the Wu-Tang catalog. Mine is the Purple Tape. Probably 36 Chambers. 36 Chambers? Yeah, because it was brand new. Brand new. It was like you ain't never heard nothing. Like that. Like a lot of times in hip hop, that's really what we fall in love with is the moment. Yep. That moment. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like I loved, I loved, uh, I loved Old Dirty's album and hated Method Man's shit. That's T crazy. Takao was trash to me. I like Takao. That was trash. Only thing on there was Bring the Pain. And um, what the blood clot was And slapping. what the blood clot was slapping. Come on. That, that's two songs, bro. Yeah. Mm -mm, what, tell me something What the blood clock Niggas want to cow Make it happen You know what Fuck the style Fuck the rapper We can take it back to 85 If you want to start Acting like you lie It's all good Ellen in front of front Ellen in front Smoke some Billy Smoke a cess blunt Skip me man They got me busted Now the whole world Look dusty I'm in the area With the steel That never rusted Fuck it What would you do Nigga What would you do What the record Like a jam high as meth That nigga was going crazy <laughs> Come on, don't fuck with me. I know some, some yeah. hot East Coast shit, West yeah. Coast shit. I know, yeah, yeah. What the Blood Clot was one of them. But you are right about that, though. You know what I'm saying? When Wu Tang is trash. When Wu Tang Clan <laughs> dropped, right? When Wu Tang Clan <laughs> dropped the 36 Chambers, yeah. that was a good time for hip hop because there was time. a lot of backpack rapping going on. Great time. Which means that gangster rappers and backpack rappers could be in the same circle and it sound dope. Yeah. Like, but no I mean, problems. It was, like, Outcast was backpack rappers. Yuck Mouth, that's what made Yuck Mouth so damn raw because Yuck Mouth was lightweight a backpack Stop rapper. Stop it. Stop lyrical. A nigga with lyrics. Yep. A nigga with lyrics. Yeah, Yuck still can't be fucked with to this day. You know what? Because I had to yeah, rank them, man. But uh, you know, yeah. That's a lot of greats. Yeah, Yuck Mouth is one of the greats. I that's think my he, brother. I talked to him like two days ago. I that's think he's brother. like probably the most underrated rapper from the West Coast to me. You think you're underrated? Definitely. Well, I think he had his run, and then times changed. Like, motherfuckers don't want... People ain't thinking right now, you know? People just going with shit and the, the momentum of shit. Like, Yuck is... Them bars is thinking, thinking bars. Like, I miss hip-hop being a... Uh, lyrical sport? Uh, no, not lyrical sport. I, uh, how do I say this? Um, an educated... Like, fan base. Okay. I ain't trying to call motherfuckers dumb. I'm just saying, like, back in, in that time frame, you had to have, you had to read a couple of books, or yeah. you had to see a couple of movies, or you had to experience a couple of things to know when a nigga say uh, X amount of, you know, what he's saying in his bars, where he coming from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now it's just really like one commercial Blending into another one, into another one, to another one, and niggas is inheriting other niggas' lifestyles and talking about other niggas' lives, and it's not really, you know, it's not, it's not what it, it's not that other shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, but uh, yeah, shout out Yuck, definitely lyricist, one of the illest niggas to ever bust. For sure. Yeah. The reason why I say that he underrated, in my opinion, is because like as dope as he is, I've never. Heard Yuck Mouth get on a song with somebody and get gas. Never. You can't beat them. You can't beat Yuck Mouth rapping. Like, you have to do something completely you different. Can't you can't beat the Yuck Mouth rapping, bro. Like, when Yuck Mouth and Dre had that shit, that was perfect balance. Yeah. 
That yeah, still, still sharp as steel, right? That so, shit was dope. Yeah, that's what y'all gonna do. He gonna make a hard ass song, but you can't out beat him rapping. You can't beat him rapping. Like you can't out rap him. Like that song, I got five on the remix. Oh, the remix. Okay. Now you know that's three different things going on, right? Talk to me. If I'm in the club, my favorite verse is Richie Rich. Okay. If I'm a rapper. Uh. My favorite verse is Yuck Mouse. Okay. If I'm not a rapper and I just don't rap and I just want to hear something funny, it's 40. There we go. But don't. That's the power of remixes. <laughs> it gives you all these other opinions and shit. That's dope. You know what that's I'm saying? That's dope. Yeah, that's dope. That's you know, because really you got to admit, when Richie Rich Park come on in the motherfucking club and they do this, no Z-Zags, believe that, choking. Where, Where are you, you from? from? Oh, Smoking. Sorry, Ain't that how sorry. that shit sound? Yeah, it go crazy. <laughs> that's, 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 that's them bars, bro. The, shout out Richie Rich, man. Shout out Double 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 Trouble. For sure. Have you ever did any music with a Scory X? Yeah, we did a few. We did a few records. We dropped a few a couple years ago. Okay. Well, not a couple years ago. Was, let's see. Uh, I don't know. Maybe seven, six, seven years ago, we dropped a couple songs. Okay. Yeah, he was out. He was out of jail. I think the brother back in jail. You heard? Or where yet? Where yet? No. Shout out to Scary. Where you at? Hey, where you at, bro? Yeah, man. Scary, one of the rawest motherfuckers ever do this. That shit. nigga went crazy too. Did you ever hear his first album, War of the State? Hell yeah. Motherfucker, War of the State. Where was you at when you heard that? Because that was like 91. Uh, 91, 92. I was in. Where was I? I think I was on 77th Avenue in the Deep East. Okay. Yeah, that's where my grandfather used to stay. That's where he was in that area. That scar, yeah, that shit went up, boy. That boy was bad. Clean ass Rebellious voice. Rebellious than a motherfucker, right? For Hell sure. yeah, clean ass voice. Like, uh. Talking it, that shit too. Cracker this, cracker that, and. Yeah, he went crazy. It's, cra- <laughs> it's crazy, though, because, like, voices, people be having unique voices. And I remember mm-hmm. when I first heard Life's a Bitch by Nas, mm-hmm. and I was like, I wonder if that's a X. I didn't know. You know, I just knew him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they okay. kind of sound right. alike. Right, but, yeah. but But a Scary X, I mean, um, AZ sounds like a Scary X rapping hella fast. Yeah, but his twist and his, his slang was a little different, though. But yeah. the, the tone, yeah, the vocal tone, I and, definitely agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. So Cell Block Three is coming out. Did oh, you do it? Shit. Did you do anything on that? Um, is that the is that the record that uh Zo and Short putting out? Yeah. That- yeah. Shout out Zo. Shout out Zo the Roaster. Shout out uh Too Short again. We do have uh like two or three on there. Okay. We sure did. I think we did one actually with Sada Baby on that motherfucker. I think they pulled Sada out. I don't know if I just let a cat out the bag or not. But okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got some shit on there. Shout out that man. Cell block three, huh? Ooh we. Okay, and what else you got coming next? We just dropped Richie Rich the Grow Room. We just did a whole album on Richie Rich. That motherfucker came out on 420. Okay. It's doing good, it's doing numbers. Um we just dropped uh Beta Weeda, the Mob God, April second. Uh, okay. That motherfucker doing numbers right now. Um we about to drop this Kick the Sneak Gorilla, Gorilla album. Are these whole albums? They whole albums. We okay. did all this from top to bottom. Like you say, Dre do movies. Yeah, that's that's what we do. Um, I got a solo album, Forex Fear. I'm about to drop. I just got the Masters back last night, so I'm gonna drop that. Then we got a, a Clyde Carson EP. We got okay. an album on Casual. Um, the, the one with uh, he was on the bus. Yeah, that's what it is, Mike. That shit was hella tight. Woo! It, was, it, was it went a, crazy. Casual. Shout out Casual and all the hieroglyphics. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, after we did That's What It Is, man, it was like, we got to do a project, so. Yeah, that shit is so, tight, so man. we got an album on Casual coming, um, Clyde Carson record. We got an album on Mr. Fab, The Mayor coming, uh, another Mechanics album, uh, Jay Stylin' on behalf of the streets, part three. Um... Shit, bro. It's just a lot of music that's coming though. And y'all still recording on High Street too? Nah, we've been moved. We've been moved to the studio. We're still in deep East Oakland though. Okay. So it ain't hard to find us. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers know where we at. We just tucked up. You know okay, I mean? and I gotta ask you this. Yeah. Have you went gold yet or platinum? 
Uh, shit, if you don't look at all the numbers, hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> For sure. Hell yeah, it might not. I mean, you know, the internet is a different beast now. Okay. I mean, I think we did our little Spotify shit. It said we had did like 14 million last year. Damn. But that's just streams, you know what I'm saying? So we don't know, like. That's hella good, what, though. Yeah, it's, it's good. Hell yeah. I mean, you, know? you know, we blessed, nigga. We in a blessed position. 14 million ain't no punk. Nigga. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. Tell me about one of your first shocking calls. Like somebody called you and they're like, hey, this is such and such. Yeah, man, I heard you. Uh, what you mean? As far as like an artist calling you or a label calling you, you're just like, damn, this motherfucker just called me. You know something that you can do. Oh, Dave calling. East, yeah, like two years ago when Dave East called me, it was like, it was on my birthday. Oh. We was chilling, getting getting drunk and shit. And um, I got my phone rang. I ain't recognize the number. I answered it. And there was this nigga named uh, Bobby Thumbs. Shout out Bobby Thumbs. I think he's from Vallejo. Um, and Bobby, like, I didn't even know who Bobby was. I don't even know how the nigga got my number. He just like, yo, nigga, this Bobby, this Bobby Thumbs nigga was happening. I'm like, I'm drunk. I'm like, what's happening, nigga? Who, what? He like, nigga, Dave, he's standing here right next to me. Nigga, the nigga signing knives. He trying to get some beats from the mechanics. I said, what? I said, tweet, some nigga over here you know, saying he trying to get some beats. Nigga Dave East. <laughs> he like, nah, nigga, I'm serious, nigga. I'm like, all right, put the nigga on. The nigga put the nigga on the phone. He like, yo, son, what up, man? I need that shit, dog. I'm like, who the fuck is this? He like, yo, this Dave. I said, hell nah. Like, really? Like, yeah, man, let me give you my email and my shit. Gave me his number, gave me, gave, gave me the email. Shit, we sent that nigga some shit. He jumped on it instantly. That shit is dope, man. I was cracking the fuck up. Like, oh, this really is Davies. And I, I still didn't believe it, but I believed it. And then what happened was uh, he went live while he was recording the record. And uh, I'm like, oh, this, that's the record. And then LeBron James okay. reposted it. And LeBron going crazy. Like, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah, we, we might got one. LeBron motherfucking yeah. James. Shout out LeBron. LeBron jumped on it for a second. <laughs> you know, I yeah. like shit like that. Hell you know yeah, that? I, I love, love that to see shit. my motherfucking I love that shit. Hell yeah. Then Fawdy jumped on it, and then Mozzie jumped on it, and it was a wrap. I heard the fuck out of that. Yeah, so. But yeah, I, I don't know. I ain't got a lot of phone calls like that, but that was that's definitely one. I didn't believe it was him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what's the name of the track? It's called uh, Devil Eyes. Devil, devil's eyes, devil eyes, devil eyes. Yeah. Okay. It's on his, it's on his album. Um, yeah. Go check that shit out. It should go crazy. And you do the hooks and shit like that. Do you ever be getting stage fright and shit like that? Stage? Nah. Nah. I used to DJ for Digital Underground, so nigga and the Loonies. So okay. them niggas took me out. I was touring at nineteen and twenty. You feel me? We were doing thirty thousand. We were doing arenas. Yeah. So I early I came into the game doing arenas. It wasn't no. Little clubs. Yeah. It was then I was spooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was scared of the motherfucker. Like what, <laughs> nigga? Young nigga, young nigga, young nigga. But uh, yeah, so that that kind of groomed me early. So no, nah, I don't. Stage stuff is like the the like icing on the cake shit. That shit is like a uh, it's like um, a reward for doing a good job, staying focused. You know what I'm saying? Get to fuck with the fans up close and you know. Man, is there any documentaries coming up, uh, with the mechanics and shit like that? Nah, we got, bro. We had, I used to keep track of so much footage. Niggas used to hate me. They always be like, this nigga always got a camera. This nigga always got a camera. This is pre-internet. Yeah. And I, But I knew it. I was like, nigga, the shit we doing is watch. It's going to watch. It's going to be monumental. It's going to make sense. And then uh, I had shoeboxes of tapes, bro. And... Over the time, motherfuckers just start disappearing and getting broke and this, that, and that, and we just ain't never did nothing with it. So I lost a lot, a lot of memories. A lot of Jay Stylins up his first career, his career taking off. I lost a lot of shit. So I don't think we're going to do no documentaries because the most monumental shit, I lost it, most of it. Damn. Yeah, I'm hella mad. But we fuck around and do a movie or two, it'll be real interesting. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, it'll be real interesting. I think that shit will be interesting. Yeah, because it'll be about Oakland and the culture and just how a lot of shit is attached. You know what I mean? How a lot of us are, are attached. Like, even me and you, we go back so long. Yeah, you me and you saying? did one record so, together. Yeah, yeah, we done <laughs> That's records. That's crazy. Well, yeah, what, what, uh, the shit for Anonymous. Yeah. Yeah, that shit was clapping. Yeah, that shit crazy, that man. Was crazy. You was busting on there, too, nigga. Went crazy. I'm like, this nigga, what? Yeah. Thank yeah, you, man. Dope.
Dope. So before we get out this motherfucker, man, tell people where they can find your handle at. Oh, at The Mechanics. That's T-H-E-M-E-K-A-N-I-X. At The Mechanics. T-H-E-M-E-K-A-N-I-X. Uh, my own my own page is at Four Racks of The Mechanics. That's the number four, R-A-X, of The Mechanics. Yeah, we, we, we respond. You know what I'm saying? We get back at you. Gotcha. Any shout outs you want to give before we get out? Uh, shout out y'all for fucking with us, man. Keep this shit lit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The Bay is lit. It's always been lit. They, we the underdogs, and I love the fact that we the underdogs, so I just need uh, our own to keep supporting our own, and let's do it. Let's push this movement. Okay. Well, thanks, man. My it's love. Shout out to my special guest, Forex and Kenny Tweed, hey. and the mechanics. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes, this sir. is another episode I need to know. I am Lawrence. The one also know LDs and another. Come on, you know what I want. <laughs> <laughs>